Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 78 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to help you as singers by answering your questions from all over the world and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later. But our question for this week comes from Felicity M in Santa Cruz, Aruba and Felicity writes, Dear Justin, I've been told if I could sing Messa de Voce, I'd become a vocal god. What do you think? <laughs> well, Felicity, that's just an awesome question. And yes, Messa de Voce is one of the most coveted skills in all of singing. It's so difficult that when we can do it, we do become a kind of vocal hero or vocal heroine, and our voice takes on a quality that's almost divine. So, Felicity, I say, Oh, to struggle against great odds, to meet enemies undaunted, to indeed be a god. Let's learn about Mesa de Voce. So what is Mesa de Voce? Mesa de Voce means to start on a single note softly, to get louder and louder, and then softer and softer. Check it out. The Italian word means messa, to place or put, and devoce, the voice. It's different from vocal placement. This is kind of saying if I can do that skill well, I can put my voice wherever the heck I want. But let's talk about why we need to learn messa de voce. Messa de voce emerges from the classical tradition, but really it's not just for classical singers. All singers can benefit by working on Mesa de Voce. Now later we're going to do an exercise for it, but think of it this way. If we can go from soft to loud to soft and back, we have control over our vocal cords. This is the very same thing we're trying to do when we work on the mix. So working on Mesa de Voce can help you develop your mix because we're going through all those different vocal cord coordinations, the same ones as the mix voice. We also talk on the show a lot about laryngeal control. Singers who have mastery over multiple larynx positions tend to be good at mesa de voce and vice versa. So it's great for your laryngeal control. Finally, it's great for your soulfulness. It's easy for me to say, to indeed be a god, or to indeed be a god, or to indeed be a god. That's easy to do in the speaking voice, but can we have that kind of dynamic and soulful control over our singing voice? That's what Mesa de Voce can bring. And so, next we're going to look at it in a song. Now the song I chose is Bring Him Home from Les Mis, and Felicity, this has a kind of heavenly and prayerful quality to it, and it's really a perfect song for demonstrating how Mesa de Voce can bring a song to life. So let's have some fun with Bring Him Home. God on high. hear how that push-pull of Mesa de Voce gives this song life. Now, it's very pretty just doing it softly. God on high, hear my but compared to the Mesa de Voce, it doesn't have the same life. So next, let's talk about what we need to do to successfully perform Mesa de Voce. And we're going to do five pillars of Mesa de Voce. The first pillar is breath control. To master Mesa de Voce, we're going to need control over our breathing. Yes, when you get louder, you need more air, and when you get softer, you need less. That's how singing works. But we don't want to be blasting the air to get louder. Ah, right? We want ah, uh, press gently on the gas pedal for that crescendo, and then gently take 
the gas pedal away for the exhale. So it's gonna be very subtle. A little bit of pressure goes a long way. Pillar number two, pitch control. Probably the hardest part about Mesa de Voce is the tendency to change pitch, right? When we add that volume, it wants to go sharp. And when we take away the volume, it wants to go flat. Something like, ah, where the pitch goes up, and I didn't mean to, or, ah, and when I take away the volume, the pitch goes flat, and I didn't mean to. It's pretty difficult to keep, ah, exact same pitch as the volume changes. So really be mindful of your pitch when you're working on Mesa de Voce. Next pillar, compression control. In singing, we have a tendency for our soft sounds to be too light, too breathy, and our loud sounds to be too squeezy, too tough. And this is what makes Mesa de Voce so hard. We want our soft sounds to not be airy or even falsetto, <sighs> but we want them to be soft but toned up. Ah, it's still strong even though it's soft. Then as we add, we don't want ah, to get squeezed, but there's a sensation of letting go of compression as the breath takes over. Ah, and then the hardest part of Mesa de Voce is coming back. Ah, we don't want to go too far loosening. We want ah, compression to stay on duty as the air and volume is taken away. That's the hardest part. The next pillar is larynx control. Now we've learned on the show that low larynxes are built for a more operatic kind of volume, whereas high larynxes are built for a more poppy microphone kind of volume. When we do Mesa de Voce, we want to minimize laryngeal movement. We don't want something like, ah, or something crazy like that. But as we move from soft to loud, you might feel a little larynx movement and vice versa. Ah, there might be a little bit of drop on the louder sounds and a little bit of raise on the softer sounds. A little is okay. Try to minimize it as much as possible. Our final pillar is resonance control. Common vocal wisdom tells us that our strong sounds go that way and our more heady, lighter sounds go up and in. But Mesa de Voce really reverses this feeling because we can't have something like ah, we can't be going outward to get loud and to get stronger. In fact, we feel it the reverse. The softer sounds have a sort of chestier airflow. Ah, and then as the crescendo happens, ah, it becomes more absorbent in the head. So it really reverses the instinct of the voice, which is why it's so hard to do. So there's your five pillars of Mesa de Voce, and now we're going to try it on an exercise. The exercise will be P-A-R-A-E, ha, on, of course, a single note. For our Mesa de Voce exercise, we're really gonna let vowels be our friend and use stronger vowels for our softer sounds and headier, more stable vowels for our louder sounds, really reversing the tendencies. Here's how it goes. So we're going to go soft, medium, loud on the vowels and then just on the ah. Really keep in mind those five pillars as we do it. We're going to have guys down here and ladies up here. And here we go together.
now just the ha. So nice. Just the ah. Excellent. Just the ah. Fantastic work. We just got one more to do, and I want you to keep in mind all those principles, right? You're gonna control the breath. You're gonna feel the change in compression. You're gonna notice your larynx's stability. You're gonna feel that resonance move up and in on the strong one, and of course, watch your pitch. Here we go with the last. Awesome, awesome work. So I hope Felicity and all that you are feeling heavenly. I hope you are feeling divine. I hope you are feeling like vocal heroes because if you've done this Mesa de Voce, you really are. And so I hope that's been helpful for you guys today as singers. If you've got questions you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. And I just encourage you, don't lose that joy, don't lose that passion, don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know it is not true. Get with a great voice teacher in your area, or if you'd like to Skype with one of our staff, or you're in the New York City area, you can visit us at www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. If you're looking for a vocal course to do at home, you can download the Voice Lessons to the World vocal course. This is a 12-part course that takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master. Hundreds of vocal exercises that you can do at home or in your car, wherever you may be. And finally, if you'd like free daily vocal tips sent to your inbox every day, great information, you can sign up at www.dailyvocaltips.com. I'm Justin Stoney. Until next time, make a joyful noise. Meow, 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 meow. But our question for this week comes from Daquan R in Toronto, Canada. And Daquan writes Dear Justin, I love your videos, but I wish you'd release a vocal course that I can do at home. Is there something like this in the works that can help? So we're gonna to talk today about what is it, how it can help us, and we're even gonna do a vocal exercise to develop twang in our voices. So let's start off the day by answering that question 